Hello everyone, here is the quiz review video for your quiz on financial statements and the closing process. This is chapter 4 in Pearson. First thing the quiz is going to ask you to do is to prepare financial statements from a trial balance. So what do we know about how the trial balance works to make financial statements? Well first it has to be the adjusted trial balance. We always make our financials after we do our adjustments. Secondly, the first financial that we're going to make is the income statement. And the income statement is going to use all of our revenue and expense accounts. The second statement that we're going to make is the statement of owner's equity. That is going to use our capital and withdrawal accounts as well as the net income that we determined on our income statement. After we complete our statement of owner's equity, we're going to prepare our balance sheet. And our balance sheet is going to use all of our asset and liability accounts, plus the ending balance of owner's capital, which we determined on our statement of owner's equity. Let's prepare the income statement and the statement of owner's equity for this company, which is Tiny Car Party Clowns Incorporated. Starting with the income statement, the first thing that we're going to need to do is use all of our revenues and our expenses. So we bring over our service revenue balance and all of our expense balances from the adjusted trial balance. Uh, you may notice here that the expenses are listed in descending order of the quantity or the amount of each account. That's pretty common in the field. Um, I usually won't knock points if expenses are out of order for the purpose of this class, but that's the way that you know users prefer your expenses to be listed. So for tiny car party clowns, we see that they had $48,800 of service revenue. When we totaled up their six expense accounts, they had $57,100 of expenses. Their expenses were more than their revenues, which means the company took a loss. In this case, a loss of $8,300. After we prepared our income statement, we need to prepare our statement of owner's equity. And what we're going to need for this is to start with our capital account using the balance on our adjusted trial balance. So Krusty's capital at the beginning of this period was 39500 If there's an owner contribution, you would throw it in here. Let's assume that Krusty didn't contribute anything to his business during the period. The next thing we're going to bring up is our loss. And then lastly, the other decrease to capital is withdrawals, which we can take right from the adjusted trial balance. So Tiny Car Party Clowns Incorporated began the period with $39,500 worth of capital to its sole owner, Mr. Krusty. But they lost $8,300, and Mr. Krusty withdrew $27,400 from the business, which means that the worth of the business, the ending capital amount at the end of this year, was $3,800. Tiny Car Party Clowns Incorporated not only lost money, but their owner took a ton of money out of the business for his own personal use. The worth of the business decreased greatly during the year. After we have finished preparing our statement of owner's equity, the last financial statement we're going to have to make is the balance sheet. And the first thing that we get to do is transfer, transfer over all of our assets and liabilities. So all of the assets and liabilities amounts come straight from the adjusted trial balance. The only thing that you need to do on the balance sheet is to separate them by class. What is current and what is non-current. Again, the distinction is one year. For assets, is it something that we expect to use up or convert to cash within the next year? If it is, it gets listed under current assets. If it's something we expect to have for more than a year, or it's going to take us more than a year to collect on some kind of long-term loan we made to someone else, all of that stuff is going to go into non-current assets. For us, we have land and building as the two things that we're not going to expend within the next year. So they get listed under a category called property, plant, and equipment. You put the balance of both your current assets and your total PPD in this case um, into the balance sheet and add those together. Tiny Car Party Clowns has $14,000 in current assets and $67,900 in PPE. In total, they have $81,900 worth of assets. For liabilities, again, the distinction is one year. Is it something that we have to pay off or you know meet an obligation within the next year, or is it something that's going to take more than one year to pay off? So our accounts payable, our salaries payable, our interest payable, and our unearned revenue, 
all things that we hope to pay off or in the case of unearned revenue, complete our performance obligation within the next year. That notes payable, however, is a long-term bank loan, which is probably going to take us more than a year to pay off. So we're going to put the first four liabilities under current liabilities and notes payable is going to be our only form of long-term debt. When we add those together, we see we have total liabilities of 78,100. Lastly, we need the balance of capital under our owner's equity section, but we don't use the capital balance which is listed on our adjusted trial balance. Instead, we take the balance that we determine to be our ending balance on our statement of owner's equity. Tiny Car Party Clown's owner, Mr. Krusty, has his capital decreased to 3,800. That is the number we're going to report on the balance sheet. And when we add together our liabilities and owner's equity, we come up with 81,900, which is the same thing that we had for total assets. So our balance sheet does in fact balance. And now that we have a balance balance sheet and we're good through our financial statements, we need to close for the period. We always close in the same order. The first uh, closing entry we need to record is our entry to close revenues. So on December 31st, we're gonna record a closing entry which closes revenues. Well, our revenue account, service revenue, has a balance of 48,800 on our adjusted trial balance. We need to make it zero. And since our balance is on the credit side, we're going to debit it for that same amount to reduce it to zero. So we debit service revenue for 48,800. We're gonna use the income summary method, which means we need to credit income summary for that same amount when we close our revenues. Same process for expenses. We have six expenses on our books. They all need to be reduced to zero. Well, they all have debit balances. So if we go and we credit each one of those accounts for an amount equal to its balance, it reduces all of our expenses to zero. And since we're going to credit all of our expense accounts, that means we need to debit income summary. So we've debited income summary in this case for 57,100 and credited all of our expenses for the respective balance according to our adjusted trial balance. And again, let's take a quick check to make sure our numbers look pretty good. We can do that with our income statement. We see that our service revenue was 48,800. Yep, that's what we credited income summary for in our first entry. And we see that our total expenses is equal to the debit of 57,100 that we had to income summary in our second entry. So we are good there. Now we need to close income summary. And we had two entries to income summary, a debit of 57,100 in our entry to close expenses and a credit of 48,800 in our entry to close revenues. Well, that means we have a balance of 8,300 on the debit side because our debit entry was bigger than our credit entry. We need to make it zero. So what do we have to do? We're going to credit the smaller side, our credit side, for the amount of our balance, 8,300. And doing so is going to reduce the balance of our income summary account to zero. So. In the closing entry, we have to close this to our capital account, and we're going to debit capital, decreasing our capital. Why are we decreasing our capital? If you remember from the income statement, we had a loss during the period, and when you have a loss, it's going to decrease the value of the business, it's going to decrease your owner's capital account in your closing entries. And from our T, we see that we just credited income summary for 8,300, in our entry which closed income summary. For withdrawals, we can go and find that balance on our adjusted trial balance. Mr. Krusty took out $27,400 from the business during the period. It has a debit balance, so to close it, we're gonna to have to credit our withdrawal account for that same amount, which is 27,400. And the debit is again gonna to go to Krusty Capital. And in this entry, we close withdrawals. So for your four closing entries, the entry to close revenues, expenses, and withdrawals, entries one, two, and four, are always gonna be exactly the same. You're never gonna have a situation where some expenses get debited, for example, or your revenue account gets credited. It's always the same. The entry to close revenues is always gonna be a debit to the revenue and a credit to income summary. The entry to close expenses is always gonna be a debit to income summary and a credit to every single one of your expenses. And the entry to close withdrawals right here in front of us is always going to be a debit to your capital account and a credit to withdrawals. The only one of your closing entries that can flip flop, that can switch upside down is the entry to close income summary. If your company lost money during the period, it's gonna look exactly like the entry that is in front of you right now. It's gonna be a debit to, crusty, or to your owner's capital account and a credit to income summary. If you had a profitable period 
it's upside down. It is a debit to income summary and a credit to Krusty Capital or owner's capital. Why is it this way? Well, capital goes down with a debit, up with a credit. If you had a loss, you got to debit it because your value of your business is going down. If you had income that was positive, the value of your business is going to be going up, so you have to credit it. So now that we're through all of our closing entries, we need to prepare the post-closing trial balance. We can again use our adjusted trial balance to do so. What happened to the value of our withdrawal, revenue, and expense accounts? Well, we closed all of them, we reduced to zero. So since these are all closed, we don't need to worry about any of those accounts on our post-closing trial balance. They no longer exist. We close them for the period. We can take the value of all of our assets and liabilities and carry it right on over. We're not going to, however, use the value of capital listed on the adjusted trial balance. We have to use the balance of capital that we determined at the end of our statement of owner's equity. Or the, if you want to consider it another way, the balance of your capital T account after you've made all of your closing entries. So when we're going to use all the numbers listed on the adjusted trial balance for assets and liabilities, but we're going to use the $3,800 balance of Krusty Capital, which we found on our statement of owner's equity. And when we throw all of those numbers together, we're going to find out that our debits do in fact equal our credits at 108600 Good luck on your quiz, everybody.